If you even breathe, chances are you've not only inhaled, but choked on the wave of poison which is the myth of toxic masculinity. Everywhere you go there's attack after attack on masculinity to the point that men are forgetting what it is to be a man. And if you dare ooze the slightest testosterone, you best be ready for these hashtag me too allegations. Because whether you know it or not, you are raping any woman in the proximity with your presence. Obviously this is absurd, I mean I could go on really about how essential this is for a functioning society. Not the rape part, of course, I think that goes without saying, but achieving high levels of testosterone as a man. Now contrary to popular belief, the opposite hormone to testosterone isn't estrogen, but the stress hormone cortisol. It's no surprise that many of the symptoms of depression are also indicative of low testosterone. Return to now writes that currently 1 in 4 men will suffer from depression, with the rate having increased steadily in the past several decades. And yet in indigenous tribes, depression has remained almost entirely absent, so it can be really described as a disease of civilization. And as a result, there seems to be an increasing trend of scams all targeted at curing suicidal thoughts and depression, through online hypnotism, cutting edge testosterone boosters and herbal remedies, all of which just make me want to kill myself. In actuality, many of the factors when it comes to your hormonal levels were determined during pregnancy. So if you're 19 and already low T, I'm sorry but there is a very real chance your mother was one wild slag. But don't worry, there are ways to increase your testosterone, firstly you need to just understand the copes. Beginning with number 1, no fat. Now let's be real guys, no one likes spending all their free time watching such sick and degrading pornography more than me. But this doesn't change the fact that if you're beating your meat every day like it owes you money, not only are you triggering the dopamine receptors every time creating an unhealthy link between porn and reward, but every time you ejaculate you're releasing some of the body's most essential nutrients. In fact when researching the video I came across multiple articles describing semen as one of nature's superfoods, composed of only 1% sperm and the rest a blend of 200 nutrients, vitamins and minerals. So it only makes sense to get the best of both worlds by eating your own cum, right? If you said yes, we need to talk. The alternative here is no fap, you silly sausage. Now multiple studies have found that in the first 5 days of no fap, nothing changes and then on day 7 that's when the magic happens and serum testosterone peaks at 145%. So it's day 7 of no fab, you're feeling the shit, and then you hit day 8, your T levels normalize and you go back to being a bitch. Plugging this shit into the coat meter, yes this is a review series now, I'm giving no fab a score of 80%. The thing about it this way, if refraining from nothing really gave you superhuman strength, then Stephen Hawking would have walked out of his wheelchair a long time ago. Now moving on to cold showers. Research shows that the testes perform best within a range of 31 to 36 degrees Celsius. Anything above this in DNA synthesis and testosterone production is stunted. Additionally, another study involving 6,455 semen samples found the sperm quality, volume, and motility was significantly higher in the colder months of the year. So it does make sense to take cold showers, however here's where it gets a bit copy. Now it's important to understand that with every cold shower you take, you're causing a spike in cortisol levels which when measured over a long period of time, has been shown to chronically raise stress levels. Meanwhile other studies suggest that over time these minor spikes in cortisol will cause your body to adapt, and therefore react better to stress. How can I put this? If you punch a child in the face once a day, maybe the one punch will be okay. But repeat this over a long period of time and you'll make a beast with superhuman powers. Now obviously I'm fucking kidding, you'll most likely make a deformed monster. And so plugging cold shells into the coat meter, I'm gonna have to give them a 93%. Why that specific? I don't know, I just pulled that number out of my ass. But it still stands to reason that cold shells are almost coat to the core. Despite this, I still recommend them if you wish to train discipline or improve blood circulation. Just be wary that you may one day find yourself in a position where you roundhouse kick a woman for micro-assaulting you. And finally, testosterone boosters. 
Unfortunately, many men have fallen victim to the power of placebo, and whilst these supplements generally increase libido, evidence to support its effect on testosterone are minimal. Here's a typical 5 star review I found on Amazon by a guy named Brett. Horny all day long. Bought it as a training aid, intensity has gone up and my sex drive is through the roof. Be careful if already high as mine is. Yes, be careful, lest you find yourself in a position like this. I think we're about done here, test boosters 100%, absolute fucking sham. So now you know the copes, and at this point you're probably asking yourself what proven ways you can increase testosterone. It's simple, inject steroids. In all seriousness, with roids you have to weigh up the good and the bad. On the one hand, if you can avoid looking like a Down Syndrome pit bull, you may just achieve your ideal physique. On the other hand, you risk the fairly minor side effects of balding, roid rage, infertility, and death. It sounds like a good deal to me, if you're retarded. When it comes to increasing testosterone, there is only so far you can go naturally, and mostly revolves around having a proper lifestyle to optimize your hormonal profile. Now I could bore you to death talking endlessly about the studies behind why you shouldn't eat this. Instead, I'll link them in the description to speed things up. Most of it's common sense. Just don't eat like shit. Most importantly, don't compromise food quality for price. Alright everybody, it's time to get the crazy. Let's do this. This video gave me my cancer. I recommend everyone gets a blood test done just to know where they stand in terms of nutrient deficiency. One particularly legit study found that in both sedentary and active men, magnesium bisoglycerate taken in four equal amounts over the day increased both free and total testosterone levels by 24%. And this works by binding to the sex hormone binding globulin, which was found to increase overall testosterone levels 11.4% over four weeks of daily 10 milligram doses. One of the other big boy plants you might see floating around on the internet is ashwagandha, which whilst not directly increasing testosterone, it has been proven to reduce cortisol and improve thyroid function. The thyroid plays a huge role in testosterone levels, and a low thyroid has been proven to be directly correlated to lower T levels. I also recommend eating foods high in iodine to improve thyroid function. The final thing you can eat to benefit your testosterone is nothing. I don't mean starve to death, although let's face it, if you're a low T male, you may as well save the world's resources for real men. Clearly I mean intermittent fasting. So long as you get a proper caloric intake, intermittent fasting was found to increase the luteinizing hormone up to 67%. Is intermittent fasting a trick to lose body fat? No. But this takes us to the next phase in being less of a bitch, which is going to the gym. Now let's face it, there is no excuse to not go to the gym, unless you're paralyzed. So long as you don't overtrain or do excess cardio, which raises cortisol levels significantly. Going to the gym is by far the best thing you can do to increase testosterone and improve overall health. As for supplements, you really don't need to take anything. So long as you're getting enough protein every day, there isn't a need to take protein shakes, as this will simply be converted to glucose as fuel or be stored as body fat. The last major thing you should do is get enough sleep at the same time every night. I also recommend taking melatonin tablets, which will help you get deeper sleep and increase the length of REM sleep, and therefore increase testosterone own production. Other than that, I strongly recommend avoiding body washes containing parabens, which are identified as xenoestrogens, meaning they mimic estrogen in the body, and they've been linked to issues such as breast cancer, early onset puberty, and a reduced sperm count. And finally, a lack of sunlight and vitamin D has been found in many studies to be directly correlated with lower testosterone. So just go out into the world bros, who knows, you may just meet some babes. If you follow this advice, you may just become a sexier, less depressed version of you. What this video won't do is turn you from an incel to Chad, as this model suggests. So if after doing all of these things, you still walk around with bitch tits, then perhaps you were just destined to be a soy boy. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment and I'll respond. This has been LuxMax.